So at this point, if they didn't send you login credentials for WordPress, um, go ahead and log into your WordPress website, log into your Bluehost account, and we'll get you going. Let's see. save your credentials to your computer, especially your laptops that you're going to take somewhere else. Always put them in. Don't save them. There's too much out there. So if you have a site, now you're at a spot. I want you to click on the dashboard on the left, this panel right over here. Okay, and you're going to have all this junk on here. We're going to get rid of all that. So this is for anybody that is Brand new, doing a brand new site, just installed. Some of you are already past that, so uh, just bear with us till we get to where you guys are at. Um, yes? <laughs> Do you mind if I alter anything on the splash drive? App? No, absolutely not. I'll have to just go now you can Now you can do whatever you want to with it. Thank you. 
except keep it. Yeah. But, <laughs> <laughs> you can give it back to me at the end of the class. Uh, I mean, at the end of the class, uh, you know, five weeks from now, whatever. <laughs> Um, one thing for security reasons, I want to go to users. So over here, click on users, and that's the very first thing you want to go through. You should never have a username that says admin. So if you do, one thing you're going to want to do is set up a new user, log out, Log in with the new user and delete the admin account. Uh, the reason is because spam bots, they already have half your login once you, they know it's admin. Because that's the number one way that they get that, guess that. So don't use admin. And I do know that there is one uh, Company. I'm not sure if it was this one or not. When they automatically installed, I think it is Bluehost, that I had to recreate and add in. Maybe it wasn't Bluehost, but there was one. It automatically set it up, and they had admin as the login. Always change it. Next thing I want you to do is go into that admin account. All you do is click on the admin, the name, and you have some options. I don't like the dark on the side, I like light. So that's my preference. You choose whatever preference you like. If you like the dark, keep it dark. You can set that. Okay. Then you want to go down, put your name in there. If you like, company name, whatever. I always put my name in there. And the other thing that you're going to want to change is this nickname. Toolbar, show toolbar. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Awesome. So put in your name if you want. I like to put my, I put my name in. Right here where it says nickname, you do not want your nickname the same as your username. You really want to try and protect your username. So don't put it in there. So I change you can change it to whatever you want. And especially Display name publicly, don't use your username. You want to use something else. So make sure you do that. If you're doing this for someone else, you might want to put in your website name, your domain. It's just kind of part of your profile. My name publicly? Hmm? I'm trying to. Just before that, you said don't, there's a box that says display name public. Yes, as. do not display it as your username. We're trying to protect oh, really? that username. Okay. So change it. So that's where you can get options for first name, last name, nickname. You can get those Where does options. the nickname show up? Where it says, what do you mean? Where does it show up? Like it'll work. show up in the code somewhere. Really? Just don't don't do it. Change it. You, I mean, really, the only place it should be is right up here in your username. Is it there? Oh, so you want your nickname different? You want your nickname, nickname different. Your nickname different and display name as different. I just use my name, and my username has nothing to do with my name. One of the most common things when I've seen spam bots out there trying to hack a website for usernames, they will put your domain name in there. And even though there's some out there that have actually gotten my username, they put it all in lowercase. Mine has uppercase characters in mine. And they have numbers. But for whatever reason, the spam bots don't catch the uppercase. So protect yourself. Use uppercase in your username. If you, at this t point in time, if it's not like that, you can go back and create a new user with those types of settings, log out and delete the other, and log in with your new setup and delete it. 
The one thing I'm trying to want to do is protect you. A lot of times when WordPress is first set up, like through Bluehost, they use a very, what I call a weak password because it's only six or eight characters. I like really long, complicated characters. WordPress makes that easy for you by generate a new password. And it will come up with random characters here. And what you want to do, you right click on that and copy it and save it to your, like I would save it to my um, login document that I have. So save it, but create long, really do create long passwords. And I'm canceling that, I don't want to get a new one. And then down here you update your profile and that will save everything. Good? I'm good. I'm working on it. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So copy and paste that somewhere. So. You're good. Yeah. <laughs> I have strong passwords. That's awesome. <laughs> Are you good? I think so. We've got a medium right now. We're trying to get better. Okay. So if you tell it to generate the password. Okay, so we'll go to hide. Oh, okay. I see, trying to be. Yes. Okay. Yeah. You can add special characters, an okay. underscore, maybe um, numbers. Just keep typing things in. <laughs> Will it save it, though? Or it will save it. Okay. Yeah, you need to copy. Paste it somewhere where it has it. Okay. Um, but it's really important for WordPress, especially, it's the number one way your website's going to get hacked, is having a weak password. So keep it strong. They've been. So how do you remember that password? You don't. You copy and paste it somewhere. <laughs> but what if you're off in Mexico somewhere and need yeah, to log in? Yeah, better hope so, with you. Then you take your little document and you print it and you take it with you. With your password written down. That would be dangerous, wouldn't it? <laughs> you can put it on a flash drive and so tuck it in your pocket. And, and have it encrypted. Put it in your belt thingy. Yes, because you can then take, put it in a folder or the file itself. You can password protect that file. So somebody would have to have a login to get to that file. But who's going to go to Mexico and work on their site? Are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> you could get bored sitting on the beach soaking up the sun. Maybe. <laughs> See, if I was going to work on my website, that sounds like a great way to do it. Yeah, there you go. No, you can't see the screen because the sun is glaring on the screen. I tried to work outside a few times. It didn't work too well. Okay, are we ready? We good? I don't want to push anybody too quickly, but all right, we're going to run through the general settings next. Right down here, general settings. Just start with general. We'll just start at the top and work our way down. All right, site title. I've already put my site title in when I got my WordPress. You, that's going to be when someone hovers over. Your site, that site title is going to come up and I keep pointing at my screen like you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> you know, it's, it's right there. It's coming up. So that's one of the things Google picks up is your site title. A tagline. This may or may not be seen on the site, but Google will still pick that up. So it should be relevant to what you're doing. Fine. Support groups or so this is an important thing, right? Yes. Take your site title and your tagline. Okay. Next thing you want to do is uh, select your time zone if you want to. You care to have that information? Uh, some people that do international stuff, they might not. Yes. 
I'm sorry. I, we got him set. We just went ahead and did the blue, blue hose. Oh, did you? Okay. So the I'm trying to remember. The first thing it does is it, under users it has an admin. Right. Exactly. So for today, right now, you can go ahead and just do that. Um, that one sheet I gave you on managing users. Oh. That shows you how to add, create a new user. A so new what user. you'll want to do is create a new user, then log out, and then log in as the new user, and then you can delete it. Ah, okay, got it. But you cannot delete it if you're logged in with that. It won't let you delete yourself, so you have to create it. Yes, ma'am. I, I don't know if we went over it. I've got membership, and there's a box that says anyone can register. Oh, yeah, mine does too. You don't want to do that. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Perfect. You don't want and unless for some reason your site's going to be like I that. But I don't, that's a different type of site. Okay. People okay. sell memberships. They might have free downloads. And you've got to let people then can. Some of your support forums, you can register and then somebody approves them okay. so that you, you can access their support form. But that's not applicable really to us. Okay. Time zone, well, you'll, you'll do the drop down if you can figure out the UTC number and whatever. You figure it out. I just I just go to Denver because that's the time zone we're in. Your date and time format, that's up to you. My weeks, I always put Sunday because my calendar starts on Sunday. And then save changes. So those are the first settings. It's Especially if you have, yeah, I, I, it, it probably doesn't even matter. I just automatically change that. Oh, okay. The next setting you're going to want to go to is writing. So under your settings, go to writing. Now, if you're a big blogger, you might want to submit blog posts to your website remotely, like through an email. Maybe you just have your cell phone, you want to submit a post. You can do it here, but I don't know of anybody in here right now that's going to be blogging except for maybe Tyson, or uh, I'm sorry, Tyson. Uh, he might want to blog. I have a blog, but it only has like five or six things on it. So what you're going to do is over here, they have these random characters right in here. Copy and paste them into those fields. Mail server, login name, or you can just put whatever you want. You can just fill them with junk. But you don't want this stuff left in there. This is a default setting. So anyone could go in, understand that, and could be putting stuff on your website and you would never know it. So if we're not going to use... If you're not going to use it, and of course if you are going to use it, you're going to change that information. You're going to change, put a different login name, a different password, uh, that type of thing. But otherwise, you know, just... You mean you're sort of blocking, you're blocking using the writing set? Correct. Remote, you know, like through an email. Type so of thing. so just want to do it or have a gibberish in there? Gibberish. Just put gibberish in those three fields. And this is only if you want to do it remotely. If you're doing it at your desk, you don't need this. Is that yes, what still do it. But I, yes, correct. If you're okay. doing it at your desk, you, you don't, don't even need You this. don't need it anyway. Gotcha. So if you're going to do 
blog and do it remotely. And you can go back and change these at any time. But for your website security, we're just trying to go through these different steps. One, to help keep it secure and just to kind of go through them so you know what you're getting yourself into here. And then save changes. Nothing saves until you tell it to save changes. We're going to skip reading at this point, right at, just for the moment, and drop down to discussion. Now, discussion just is yes. Question. If you if you did put gobbledygook in, and then you decided later on that oh, you know, I really would like yeah, to just change it. Oh, you can just go in and change anytime. it. Anytime. Anytime. Oh. Yeah. Anytime. All right. So now we want to go into discussion. And discussion is whether or not you're going to allow comments and how hard you're going to make it for people to leave comments. Uh, it's a good idea if you're not going to allow comments on your site. Unless you're a blog, there's no reason to have comments. So you want to go up here and uncheck that. Allow leak notifications from other blogs and allow people to post comments on your articles. Uncheck those because you don't really want them. I uncheck a lot of this stuff. So, so. So what you're doing is great for a, a non-blogging website. Yes, kind of correct. Unless it's a blog, most people bloggers want comments because they want that interaction. So unless you're blogging, uh, there's really no reason to have it. It's just going to save you a lot of headache having to monitor all the spam comments that are going to come in. I leave these checked to email me. Anyway, I don't make those changes right in here. I do say comment must be manually approved. If for some reason something gets bypassed, you never know the technology out there what's going to come up. So I just leave that checked. And then if you want a cute little icon, you can either, you can change this. I'm going to put the funny guy up here. That's going to be my icon. And I say changes. Wait a minute, mm -hmm. I'm going slow. Okay. Hold the comment in queue if it contains. Oh, how many links? Yeah. Uh, that means spammers generally put more than one or two links in their comments. So you might want to limit it to one. If you allow comments, you might want to allow one. Okay. Otherwise, it, it's if you're not going to allow comments, it's really irrelevant. But I just change it to one just because normally if you put zero, in most web applications, that almost means unlimited. So, so I wouldn't put zero. I don't know how, for sure how that works in here. I just always turn them off. Then click Save Changes. And I, you know, I change my little icon down at the bottom, right down in here. And then where the comment, the, the big white boxes, we don't put, OK. You don't have to do anything in there. Yeah. I changed, I, I wanted to see a little cute little icon instead of a mystery man, so I changed it up there, or down there. I put that one right there. In order, mm -hmm. in order yes. to have all those options down the side, does he need to be able to log in as more than just a user? Yes. He needs to be an admin, administrator. He needs to be an administrator. Yes. Yes. <laughs> A user can't delete the admin account either, so the administrator is the only one that can. But set him up as an administrator. The next link down here is media. That pretty much never gets changed. The one thing just to be aware of, it organizes by month, year, and date in folders. And it might seem like, why do they do that? But if for some reason, you kind of have to go back and look for something that's an easier to kind of get a general idea when something might have been added and go back in to media. Media is pictures, PDF documents, video files maybe, but you never really want to host a video file on your website. Audio files you might have. So there's nothing really to change there. And then you also, the very next one, permalinks. This is an important one. This is going to help you with your SEO. By default, on this one is set for day and name. A lot of times you're going to get this 
this one will be the default with page 123. Well, that doesn't do you any good. You always want to go with the post name. So when you name your page, your, or, or it's going to be, you know, um, about my website is the name of the, the page, or, you know, about my company, that's going to do more for you in SEO because Google will pick that up. That will be shown in the results. If it just says page 123, it doesn't say anything about the page. So people are going to make probably di might discount that. So it's just important. Post name, that's what you want. And save changes. So this optional thing down below, category base, tag base is uh, that's for posts. Uh, posts. There's posts and pages. Pages are your static content, like your home page, your about page, uh, your services page, your contact page. Uh, posts are for like blogging type of posts where you can categorize things with special tags. And, so at this point, you know, if you're not going to do a blog, that's that's an irrelevant thing. It doesn't matter. Some other plugins, depending on what you're doing, like there's a look, maybe locations pages. Maybe you have locations different places. You might use the locations plugin, and they do use categories and tags as well. But for our purposes, we don't need that. Okay, so is everybody in a good spot? 